Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about romance books that are at the top of my TBR that have disability representation. So if you don't know, I am a huge advocate for representation when it comes to romance books, especially with disability representation. I have quite a few videos. I want to say six recommendation videos. Um, I'll link a playlist down below. I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel full of video recommendations I've made for disability representation. July is also Disability Pride Month, where I'm going to be prioritizing reading books with disability representation. I read a lot of books with disability representation, but I really want to highlight them, especially during our Pride Month. I have not read these books yet, just by the way. And so I am praying and hoping that the representation is good, but I never really know until I read the book myself. So take with that what you will um and let me know down below if you've read any of these books and you know if the representation is good or not please i would love to know so without further ado here are disability rep books that i can't wait to read first off i do want to mention on july 11th <laughs> we have out on a limb by hannah bonham young i have already read this book but if you are wanting to read a book with amazing disability representation this book comes out on july 11th and I absolutely love it. It's my favorite book of the year and I don't think anything will top it. It's probably might be my new favorite romance book of all time. We'll see. I'm gonna have to do a reread when the audiobook comes out. Like I cannot wait for this book to come out and for everyone else to read it. For representation in here, our hero in here, Bo, is an amputee. He had cancer and had to get his leg amputated. Um, and then our heroine in here, she was born with a limb difference, which is own voices for Hannah Bottom Young. Um, that's basically where one of her hands is less developed than the other. Um, and so I really love the representation in this book. Both characters were oh, so good. Hannah Bottom Young is a fantastic author. She's becoming one of my new favorite authors ever. You have to pick this one up when it comes out. Like. Please. Uh, this is a surprise baby romance and both of their lives are completely changed because of it and I cannot rave about it enough. So if you need a book that I know has amazing representation in it, look it up right there. The first book on my list that I have not read yet <laughs> is Catch and Cradle by Katya Rose. This is, I think almost all of these books are on KU. I will let you know if they're not on KU. Um, this one is, this is a college sports romance. It looks like they play lacrosse. Both of these women are in the UNS women's lacrosse team. One of the heroines is Becca, who is captain. And she is very intent on making sure like none of the players fall in love with each other. Like she's very, very hardcore on rejecting inter-teammate relationships. It's like, that's not gonna happen. But then um, Hope Hastings joins the team and I think like all bets are out the window, like Becca cannot stop thinking about her. And so their friendship turns into something more after like two years or something like that. So yeah, I can't wait to read this one. I'm wanting to read more sapphic romances. For representation in here, I believe we have dyslexia representation. Next is Would You Rather, which this book is currently sitting in my Libby. Right now, the audiobook is out, so I need to pick it up. This one is not on KU, but I know there is an audiobook out, so check your Libby. This one is about Noah and Mia, and it looks like this is a friends to lovers romance. I always love those. Mia is in need of a kidney transplant, so that's the representation here. She needs more money to afford this transplant. Obviously, that's gonna be expensive. So Noah suggests they get married in order to provide her with better health insurance. And obviously uh, this marriage of convenience turns into something more with this friends to lovers romance. It sounds really good. Next is Almost Maybes by Anna P. Like look how cute this cover is y'all. I love it. Okay, this one is a KU book. Um, and I believe the representation in here is anxiety, panic, and PTSD. Okay, so this looks like there's a 10 year age gap between these two characters who are Olander and Jackson. Oleander is the older one. She's 36 and Jackson is 26. It looks like he's like the total nerd. It seems like he's never the guy that women want too nerdy, not enough muscles, and far more inclined to break out pop culture references every single time. And then he meets Oleander. It says neither of them were looking for love, but persistence and charm not only gives Jackson a chance to be himself in a relationship, but also encourages Oleander to drop her walls and open up to something new. That sounds so cute. Then a book that is on my TBR is obviously real. 
I really want to read this one. Like I still haven't read it yet. I got this freaking signed by Kennedy. I got to meet Kennedy. Have I read it? No. Like, I don't know why this book is like hanging over my head. I know I'm going to love it. Why don't I pick it up? I heard one in here. Um, is hired to work on the Heroes uh, movie. He's a director, um, but he has like strict rules with himself for not dating actors he hires, but he cannot help himself with this woman. And I think she is through the pro getting through the process of being diagnosed with lupus, I'm pretty sure. So that is a representation in here, but all my friends freaking love this book. I just need to get to it. I need to. The next one is Meet Fake by Abby Sabrina. This looks like it's a fake dating romantic comedy. This one says, I'll do anything to get my trust fund on my 25th birthday, even if it means striking a deal with the new barista. My parents think that they can manipulate me into being the robot they deem acceptable to society by withholding my trust fund. But the joke's on them if they think augment their demands. I'm a Remington, which means stubborn is my middle name. Sage is perfect for the role of fake girlfriend, but at some point pretending to date her turns into real feelings that make me question every dream I've had. Okay, so fake dating rom-com. Um, and I think uh, this book also has lupus. So there's that representation like real has. Next is A Razor's Edge by Mia Crawford. This one's about Ellison and Calvin. Ooh, it looks like this is a bad boy MC romance. Ellison first meets Calvin when she's 16, when she moves uh, with her family to where he lives. Um, and he is the president of the local motorcycle club. Um, but despite his reputation, like they get to know each other and she finds that Calvin is like the sweetest ever. Like he has a heart of gold. But then one violent night destroyed the future that they envisioned together. Calvin ends up being locked up in prison for a decade because of an act of violence he will never forget. And he's thought about her every single day he's been in prison, um, but Ellison isn't the same girl he left behind. They say time heals all wounds, but nothing cuts as deep as your first true love. Sounds good. That sounds very intriguing. Representation in this one um, is epilepsy. So I don't really see that a lot. So I hope it's a really good rep. Next is Love Blooms at Christmas Inn. We'll see if I read this one this month in July. Um, if not, I'll probably read it around Christmas time. Blossom is our heroine in here and she is a wheelchair user. She was in a car accident um, that left her with the inability to walk five years ago. And so she never really expected to find the love of her life after experiencing what she did. Um, but then with like her brother getting married very soon, like she's wondering whether or not like maybe it can actually happen for her. Carter is our hero in here and he is an up and coming real estate broker in New York. His car ends up breaking down in the middle of Massachusetts and that's the last thing he needed. So he ends up staying at a place called Christmas Inn because there are no other options. And it turns out Blossom is the room manager and he catches her eye and she catches his eye and it just looks really sweet. Next is Perfect Silence by Carrie Lamore. This is a book that is not on KU, um, but right now it's currently free. I don't know if it will be when this video goes up, but go check it out. It might still be free. Carly in here is deaf. And so she grew up in a world without sound and she grew up in an all deaf family as well. Blake is our hero and she knows from their first conversation that he'll never understand how she's caught between two worlds and struggles to find acceptance. So it looks like Blake in here is our hero and he is a pediatrician. It looks like his nephew is diagnosed with hearing loss. And so Carly steps in to kind of help him. Love this cover. This cover very much intrigued me and um, I can't wait to read a book with deaf representation. Like I feel like it's gonna be a major part in the book if the heroine's like sole purpose is like really delving into advocating for herself and those around her and especially her family. Oh, next is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This one's definitely on my TBR. Um, I know that Rebecca Yaros either has EDS or POTS or maybe both, I don't know. Um, but this is Own Voices, I think for EDS. Um, this is a fantasy romance about dragon riders. That's all I know. People have been loving it. Some people have been hating it. I hope I'm one of the people who loves it. Um, but the heroine in here has what uh, Rebecca Yaros deems to be EDS, but in this fantasy romance world, like it's not labeled as that. She um, just is weaker and has brittle bones. Um, and so you can look up EDS to figure out what that means and what the diagnosis means and everything like that, what the condition is. Um, but basically EDS stands for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is kind of like a sister chronic illness to POTS. So um, we have a lot of the same symptoms. So um, I really want to read this one, especially for that representation, but also because like 
there's a lot of buzz around it, obviously. Next is The Silent Sacrifice by R.A. Pack. Born of both life and death, Hilya lives a life of pain and rejection, superstition making her a par pariah <laughs> until she is needed to make the ultimate sacrifice. Silent she stands for her people until death himself rises up to thrust her into a world of dragons and magic. The line between good and evil isn't as clear as she was led to believe. And in the end, she must decide, embrace the light or let the darkness consume her. That sounds so stinking good. Are you joking? And this one has speechless representation. So I think that Hilya is speechless, um, but like a death coming in and it's probably romance with her and death, like, Come on now. Next is the only other book that I have physically. This is Unlikely Match by Laura Bradbury. I've been wanting to read this book for so long. Brie and I have been wanting to read this book, um, but there's no audiobook, And so we're kind of like patiently waiting, but I do have a physical copy. I was gifted this book very kindly for Christmas by my lovely friend, Spirit. I love you, Spirit. Um, but this book is on KU if you want to read it as an ebook. Anyway, I know the representation here is own voices for a kidney transplant. This is the romance between Jules and Tom, and they end up having to share office space, but uh, they do not get along whatsoever. But I think someone's like out to get like both of their companies or something like that. So they have to like team up together to like take this person down possibly, I don't know. Um, but I love this cover. And I think the representation is just gonna be amazing in here. It is own voices. I very much tried to prioritize books that have own voices rep, and so I can't wait to read this one. Next is The Curveball by Megan Cousins. This is another book that I know has own voices representation for PCOS. This is about Penelope and Jake, and it's like a baseball love and romance. Penelope is behind the scenes on the best baseball talk show in television. Jake ends up, I think, like coming on to the talk show um, or he gets hired there, I'm not sure. But then he gets very intrigued by Penelope and they really connect over baseball. Like they are completely hooked with each other because of how their conversation flows so easily and they're both very passionate about the sport. I think it's a forbidden romance because she is the producer of the show. Um, and so it's kind of forbidden, like he can't date his producer. So I think that's the forbidden aspect in here. I also know this is like a closed door romance as well and it's friends to lovers. And yeah, it has PCOS representation in it. Next is Love Language by Reese Morrison. This one I know has a uh, deaf representation. This is about Marco and Greg and they end up meeting on Valentine's Day in a certain type of club, if you know what I mean. Marco's kind of sick of having to like lip read a lot um, especially in this club, um, but then Greg steps in to explain something in sign language and um, he's very intrigued by this very much older man who is a fluent ASL speaker um, and he has this kind of mysterious quality to him and he looks kind of sad and he just wants to get this to know this man more and so I think this is like a dom sub romance so um yeah sounds really good next i have the duke meets his matchmaker by bianca blythe this book has been on many a tbrs this book is not on ku um but i think it's 99 cents it's fairly cheap um and it is also the fifth book in a series and i haven't read any of the other books in the series i think the heroine in here is a wheelchair user or she's not able to walk i i don't know if she uses a wheelchair and i believe daisy in here um is like asked by the Duke of Hammett to like find him a wife, but then they end up falling for each other instead. I love those romances, especially in historicals. Next is Wolf Lost by Sam Burns. Ooh, this is a Omegaverse romance. I need to read more of those. I haven't read one of those in a long time. Um, this one's about Sawyer and Dez. So Sawyer cannot go home. Um, the alpha who replaced his father wants him as a tool to cement his political power and Sawyer isn't interested in marrying his father's murderer. Des Sullivan's leg may never heal from his last mission in Afghanistan, but he's getting used to that. What he can't adapt to are the nightmares and the tremor in his hand that the doctors insist are all in his head. Next to that, being a brand new werewolf seems easy until Sawyer Holt blows into his life. The Omega activates his wolf instincts in a new way and they threaten to overwhelm his common sense. Both men are in Colorado searching for a new start, a new pack, and the safety they've lost. Their meeting is pure kismet. Like, that sounds so cute. I need to read like an Omegaverse book. I haven't read one in a bit. And 
As you like read from the summary, um, it looks like Des is going through a few things. He has a hand tremor and um, I believe he walks with a limp as well because of what he experienced in Afghanistan. And I'm also very intrigued to read this book because you don't read a lot of werewolf romances where like they're like a newly turned werewolf. So I'm really intrigued. Next is What I Didn't Say by Carrie Taylor. So it looks like Jack got in a car crash the night of his senior year homecoming. And with that, he got a T-post embedded in his throat. Like, that is awful. His biggest regret of all is what he never said to Samantha Shea. He's been in love with her for years and never had the guts to tell her. Now it's too late because after that night, Jake will never be able to talk again. So we have speechless representation. Um, so when Jake returns to his small island home, population 5,000, he'll have to learn how to deal with being speechless. This book summary, just by the way, does use the M word. And I've been told by people that like, it's not okay to say that word. Um, so just be aware of that. This book was written in 2012. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that. He also finds that his family isn't limited to his six brothers and sisters, that sometimes an entire island is watching out for you. And when he gets the chance to spend more time with Samantha, she'll help him learn that not being able to talk isn't the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Maybe if she'll let him and she will finally tell her what he didn't say before, even if he can't actually say it. Next, I have Whatever Happens by Michaelia Smeltzer. I really wanna read a book by this author. And so when I learned that this book has autism representation, I was like, that's going on my TBR. Yes, I've heard great things about this author. So this is about Violet. Um, this former popular girl is lost. Her parents uproot everything after her younger sister's suicide, moving states away to escape the lingering pain of loss. She doesn't fit in anywhere, but finds herself strangely drawn to the boy she watches view the world through a telescope. Finley Crawford isn't your typical boy next door. Being autistic has always set him apart from kids his age. None of them quite know how to approach him or interact, leaving him with only one friend in the form of his support dog. I love when support dogs are in books, like, yes. Um, his lack of friendship lead him to a unique love of space and aspirations of one day reaching for the stars. For in the stars, he sees a peace and beauty he can't find on earth. The more time the two seemingly opposite teenagers spend together, the more they learn it isn't what's on the outside that counts so much as what can be found on the inside if only you care to look. So I think this is a YA romance. So um, yeah, I've heard really good things about this author. And I think she also does write like adult romance, um, but she, I think I've seen her write the occasional YA romance too. Next I have The Captain of Her Fate by Nina Mason. This is about Captain Theobald Reynolds and Louisa Bennett. So Theobald lost his leg at the Battle of Trafalgar and with it his belief any woman would find him enough to love. Louisa finds Theo incredibly attractive, both as a man in his own right and as an alternative to the odious cousin her heartless father has arranged for her to marry. First, however, she must convince the captain her interest in him stems from the man he is, scars and all, and not on being the lesser of evils. So. That kind of sounds like a lying romance though. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But I want to read more historical romances with disability rep because like, I feel like it's done really well in historical romances. Um, and I just, I, I want to read more. Okay, and the last one for this list is an alien romance. I had to find an alien romance to put on this TBR. This is Wed to the Alien Prince by C.V. Walter. Kaylin knows an alien when she sees one. The trick, given her eyesight, is actually getting close enough to see them she might as well wish upon a falling star. Against all odds, one just walked right up to her and introduced himself as Roger. He's on a mission from a Molly, the friend she's traveled halfway across the country to see. When their hands touch, everything changes. Caitlin has a chance to become everything she ever wished she could be, but it will cost her everything she currently is. Prince Sajirono, who I guess is Roger, <laughs> Um, has found the perfect match in an um, per imperfect woman. When he catches her during a seizure, everything he assumed finding his mate would mean is turned upside down. His people's technology can help her if she lets it, but at what cost to her and to him? When his duties and her safety conflict, can they create a happy ending? So I believe the heroine in here, Kaylin, has a genetic disorder. Um, it's not really specified. I haven't, I've like read in the reviews and no one really told me what genetic condition it is um but yeah i can't wait to read this one i need 
alien romances, obviously, for this list. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some romance books with a disability representation. They're on my TBR. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, um, and what you plan on reading for Disability Pride Month. I would love to know. Again, I have recommendation videos linked down below if you want some recommendations. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me let's see you can leave me any kind of flower emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all